I'm going to tell you about the giant beaver. Yeah. Because the giant beaver is related to the islands that we have out here in Georgian Bay. Manitoulin Island, all those islands all the way up to Sault Ste. Marie, all the islands on the east shore of Georgian Bay. And these islands out here, they're all part of the same event. Now this happened many, many, many years ago. Nana Bush and his grandmother had been tracking the giant beaver all along the shores of a great body of water, Anishinaabe Kichigumi, or what we say today is Lake Superior. And they were traveling along the south shore and they were heading east to the part of the bay where, where, uh, where it gets really, really narrow. And while they were tracking the beaver, they, they actually lost the trail. So they decided they would have some, some rest, and they set up camp. And Nana Bush went out fishing, and, and grandmother, she said about making tea and boiling water and picking berries and stuff like that. And they stayed there for a while. I don't know how long they stayed there. But something strange started to happen. They noticed that the water in the bay had started to rise. Well, they knew that because, because where they had set up their camp, there were stones off in the distance. And when they looked at those stones again, those stones were very slowly sinking under the water. So they realized something was going on. So they broke camp and they headed east. And eventually, they found a great dam, the giant beaver's dam. Well, they didn't see where the giant beaver was. So Nana Bush left his grandmother there, and he went off searching because it was much easier for him to go off by himself instead of having to wait and make sure that his grandmother was safe and uh, keeping up to him. So Nana Bush went on his way, and Grandmother stayed there by the dam. And we don't know how long they were separated, but one night, Grandmother heard water splashing. And she got up, and she listened, and she walked around I think she had good night vision. She walked around and after a while she could see the outline of a beaver in the dark. Now, she caught that beaver. Now, I'm not really sure how she caught the beaver. Probably she had a, she had a snare. She caught the beaver by the tail and the beaver was so surprised and the beaver couldn't get away. He tried swimming, swimming, that didn't work. He tried wriggling, that didn't work. But the grandmother was holding on to the snare that was holding on to the beaver's tail, and she was calling for Nana Bush, but he was so far away he didn't hear her. And the beaver struggled and struggled, wiggled and wiggled and tried to pull away, and then finally realized that he had a better chance of escaping if he, if he broke through his own dam. And so that's what the beaver did. The beaver started to tear away his own dam. And after a while, you know, there was a trickle of water. And then that tr trickle turned into a gurgle and it got louder and louder and pretty soon the whole dam burst wide open and the water rushed through. And of course, Nokomis, she had to let go. Otherwise, she would have been swept away with the debris from the dam. Well, Nanabush, wherever he was, 
he realized something was going on because suddenly, you know, there was water rushing everywhere. He hurried back to his grandmother to see that she was safe, and she was. And the next day when the sun rose, they got out together, the two of them, Nana Bush and his grandmother, and they climbed up on top of what remained of that giant beaver's dam. And they looked out, and they were amazed because they saw a landscape they'd never seen before. They saw islands where there had been no islands. Now, some storytellers say that Nana Bush and his grandmother continued to track the giant beaver and eventually found the giant beaver where the water turned salty. Well, that's when Nana Bush and the giant beaver decided to make peace. That Nana Bush would not go on tracking or hunting down the giant beaver and they would live in harmony. And so Nana Bush and his grandmother and the giant beaver made their way back to the, I guess we call them the Great Lakes today. Let me tell you a little bit more about that story. There's a place up in Lake Superior, that's the Anishinaabe Gichikumi, a place called the Nataway Gross Cat Barrier. Some people call it a berm, so it's kind of like a dam. And you can actually see it uh, on a satellite picture. You can, you can see it at the eastern end of Lake Superior. Now, researchers from the University of Wisconsin did some research on that dam. And from their research, they believe, or they theorize, that that dam burst about 9,100 years ago. And that's approximately when researchers say that giant beavers went extinct. Now, giant beavers, let me tell you a bit about giant beavers. Giant beavers coexisted with mammoths and mastodons, uh, saber-toothed cats, Ice Age bears and all those other uh, Ice Age creatures. Uh, the other, the other creatures who were around at that time, well, there was the uh, little Castor Canadensis or Castor Castor Americanus, the Canadian beaver, also known as the American beaver, and you know who else was around? Our people. So at the end of the Ice Age, our people were here because. Our people have stories about the Ice Age. And that's the end. I remember getting cold. Grandma, the grandma grabbed, grabbed the beaver by the tail and she just hung from there. Like, yeah. no trap, no nothing. Yeah. Just pure grandma strength. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Yeah. True matriarch strength. 